Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now before we go on, can we call for that daily prayer? Say this with me, say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread. Thank you for giving it to me, Lord. And I receive all of it without fear. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now I want you to listen carefully to what I'm about to share with you. Now, the Lord have said that this month is a month of position. And the Lord was just talking to me about this is very, very important. The Lord is going to move on the earth. And and let me speak for where I know. Because when the Lord speaks to you, He speaks to you concerning your area. He, he, he speaks to you. Con- yeah, He can speak to you concerning everything. But then primarily, He, he would. And you should be concerned about your area. So the Lord's going to move upon our nation. And especially this period. Especially this period. This week, next week to the end of the month. And what you will call judgment is going to come through the land. Now, because God wants to position his children right, it means there are certain people that must be displaced. So the Spirit of God is doing this by himself. He is choosing out your portion. And the moment your portion is marked, Anyone who's a hindrance to your portion will be displaced. So God is moving through the land and this is going to be taking place. Now here's the instruction the Lord gave to me. And this is the part that matters to you. Let's not go into other details. As much as you can, and take this as a command from the Lord, can you begin to break bread on a daily basis as an individual if you have a family break bread with your family start begin to break bread because 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 this is it when god moves like this satan can take advantage when it's a season of judgment satan takes advantage of it so God will always give instructions because he will tell his children what will exempt them from that season, from the negative effect of that season and what will preserve them. It's, they are going to be preserved by instructions. So now the Lord is saying, break bread. Take what you call it communion. You know, some people call it communion. Take that bread and wine. Eat it. Pray over yourself. Pray over your family. And declare, especially Psalm 91, over your life. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I dwell there. So the Lord is saying, this is how to live in this season. This is how to live in this period. Now, breaking of bread should be something that you do constantly. You don't have to wait for a pastor to be there to give you the bread and the wine to eat. No, you can, you can. It's it's been broken already. The blood has been shed already. So Jesus said, do it as often as you do it in remembrance of me. So when we do that, we are stating this is where we belong. We belong to the covenant of Jesus. We belong to his body. We belong to his bones. This is where we belong to. So any judgment that is going to come upon Jesus freely comes upon us. Now you know what that means. Anything God is dividing on the earth, the portion of Jesus is what he gives to us. So so constantly you should be breaking bread. That's the statement you are making before heaven. And and if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, breaking of bread should be a constant thing around you. When people come around your house, that's that's the sign. That's what they should use to know. Oh, this is a believer. 
it, it's very important. It, it's not a religious thing. It is an expression of our faith in the covenant that we are involved with. And Jesus commanded us, we should do it often. So don't say, I did it at the beginning of the year. Oh, I did it at the beginning of the month. You, you can do it daily. And now, especially, the Lord is saying this to you. Do it daily. Do it daily. Now, whenever the Lord commands us to do something physical, hear me? Because people don't understand this thing. So you hear people criticize what they don't even understand. Anytime the Lord commands you to do something physical, it's not because his power is limited to that thing. No. It is because of the angels. Anytime God instructs you to carry out an action that is physical, it has everything to do with the angels. It is the angels that sees that physical thing you do. And they're like, oh, this is the one the Lord has sent us to. You remember in Egypt, God told them tonight, the angel is going to pass through the land. But this is what you ought to do. Take the blood of the animal you have killed for your family and put it on your doorpost. He said, when the angel sees, he will pass away. Why couldn't God have said, angel, separate my children from, <laughs> no. He told the children what to put on their doorposts as an emblem. It had to be something physical. So God instructs the angel, go and carry out this mission. But any doorposts you see blood, don't enter. Now you know the truth. Any Egyptian who at that time decided to sleep in the house of the children of Israel, they got saved that night. So get this. When God gives these instructions, it is because of the angels. Because most times this work is carried out by angels. You remember a lot when the angels got to Sodom? They told Lot, hey, do you have anyone apart from these in this town? Go get them and let's go. Now, Lot had some children beyond the two daughters he had. He had children who were married. And the Bible said, Lot went to them and said, come, there is a message. Let's leave town. Those ones refused to follow. Now, the angels told him, do you have anyone apart from this in this land? More like, now, you think the angels should know. Oh. Sir, we are asked to take you out. Do you have anyone else that we should go with? So that's how angels operate. Angels don't know everything. They walk by the command of the Lord. And when God gives them command, the same God gives us command. Now what happens when we keep God's command, the angels recognize us that these are the ones the Lord instructed us concerning. So if you disobey God's command, guess what happened? The angel is not going to automatically know you. No matter how born again you are, angels don't know you. The only way they recognize us is when we begin to speak. Generally, that's how angels recognize us, when we begin to speak. And you know, the, we, the Bible says we are in the midst of an innumerable company of angels. Now, this is why it is important. I, you know, when, when I think of these things, I, I, just, I just tell myself, God's children suffer for nothing. You suffer for nothing because you don't know what the father has provided for you you don't know if you know your days of suffering will be over like last year i'm telling you the truth but it's not too late you can start today i read a scripture to you Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall, meaning speak it, speak it, speak it.
speaking. Be a talking spirit. Why? So I say, hey, must I say it all the time before God will hear me? It's not about God hearing you. Don't you understand? It's about the angels hearing you. He said, but, but I said it yesterday. And I think the angels said, hey, 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 hey. You are you are in the midst of an innumerable company of angels and not all of them know you you spoke the word in your house yes the angels in your office are not the same angels in your house and the angels in your office have been commanded to favor you that day but how are they going to know you they are going to know you by the words you speak. For the Lord hath commanded them that I will put my word in his heart and in his mouth. And he will speak it and you will recognize him and do what I have commanded you to do. And here is the Lord telling you what to say. And like, mm, 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 mm. You miss your opportunity. Angels are there. Provision is there. God was present. He did his part, but you didn't do your part. So Jesus said, what I tell you in the ear, shout it on the house door. Why? That the angels will hear you. Be smart with your life. Be very smart with your life. Everywhere you go in this life, there are angels around you. Listen, listen. When, don't die for nothing. Don't you understand? There is so much help. Don't get broke and stay broke for nothing. There is so much help. Don't get into trouble for nothing. There is so much. Oh, people have surrounded you. There are angels in that place, but it doesn't mean they know you. How will they know you? What is coming out of your mouth? So you find Elisha saying to his servant, fear not. Those that are with us are more than those that are <laughs> with them. And, and, and the servant said, Sir, I know what I saw outside. And then he said, Lord, can you just open? Oh, he didn't pray, Father. Can you send us help? Send us angels. No, the angels are there. Listen to me. The angels are there. They are there. When that car was some assaulting, there were angels there. When you got into trouble and people around there and they wanted to be there, there were angels there. When that bill was due for payment, there, were, there are angels there. Angels are everywhere. Why are they there? A la broche. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation? But those who are heirs of salvation don't know what to do. They don't know how to communicate with angels. They just don't know. So because they don't know, they perish. The days of perishing is over. Your, those days of you perishing, they are all over. No more perishing in your life. In the name of the, you will not perish in your finances. You will not perish where your health is concerned. You will not perish where favor is concerned. So I say, I don't know. Nobody just ever shows me favor. Check what's coming out of your mouth. Check it. Check what's coming out of your mouth. He that God sends does what? Speak God's words. Praise God. Speak it in your house. Speak it in your bedroom. When you come out of your gate, speak it. When you're driving in your car, speak it. You get into any office, speak it. Speak it. So, so what should I say? Listen to what the Spirit of God is going to give you to say. Always the echo. You don't have to shout. You don't have to say, hey, the name. No, 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 no. You, you're sitting down in an office waiting for someone. And someone had given you an appointment. And you are there sitting, waiting. And you waited 30 minutes, waited one hour. Instead of you sitting and just complaining and thinking how this person is wasting your time, just pause and say, Lord, I just want to fellowship with you, Lord. Say something to me. Say something to me. And, and, and you, you just hear your spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want nothing. Mm, mm. no, so say, say the same thing you hear. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hey, guess what? An angel will just get to say, hey, ah, this is the person we wait for. Oh, okay. Ah, let's let's arrange this meeting first. And the angels are written. Suddenly they say, Oh, sorry, you've been waiting for me for so long. Nobody even told me. Say, well, I've been here. You think it's normal? Angels have done some work for you. Praise God. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus from today. 
this wisdom is impacted into you and you begin to experience the manifestation of this in jesus mighty name amen god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye